so let's think about what music is. First of all, it's it's a pattern. So non-pattern music is noise. It's a pattern. But then it isn't one pattern. It's multiple patterns layered on top of one another in a harmonious manner and in a manner that indicates in some sense communication between all the patterned layers because they have to go together. And so what's the world? Well, the world's made of objects. It's like, no, it's not. It's made of patterns. So music is just like the world because the world's made of patterns. And then music has layered patterns that are all moving together in a harmonious manner. And so what do you do when you hear that, especially if it's got a beat? Well, then you move your body. And you want to, right? The music calls to you to move your body. So now you're moving your body in sync with the patterned layers of the world. Well, that's meaning. And then there's more to it. So that's so cool. Is Music is an analog of the structure of existence itself. And it calls to you to take part in that. And then, so maybe you dance by yourself. Or maybe even better, you dance with someone else. And so then you both bring your bodies into this patterned relationship with this multi-layer harmony together in a spontaneous way, indicating that you can both play and are therefore potentially trustworthy future mates. That's unbelievably cool. And birds dance. It's not just human beings, you know. So this is a deep thing. And then music does something else, too. It, it puts you on the border between chaos and order. Because a boring song does exactly what you expect it to do and, and gets dull very quickly. And an unlistenable song is so random you can't follow it. And so what you want is predictability with a leaven of unpredictability. And then that puts you right on the edge. That's the zone of proximal development. Vygotsky discovered that. Like a Hendrix song. Yeah, yeah like a Hendrix song. Well, any great music does yeah, that. But it, I mean, I Hendrix mean, has so much creativity inside the structure of the song because mm -hmm. there's riffs that he'll right, do. Right, right, right. And everyone right. loves... Oh, man, I went to this yeah. bar in Nashville. Uh, this band was playing Kelly's Heroes, a great guitarist, the best guitarist I've ever seen. And they were playing old country music with a heavy blues rock uh, twist. So they do this great version of uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky, like 15 minutes long. And mm. this brilliant guitarist just goes way out on a limb. And everybody in the crowd it's so it was so fun to be there they're just thrilled to death because they're watching this man doing the same thing that surfers do he's like dancing on the edge of chaos and order in this virtuosic manner and everyone is so taken by that that it just lifts them out of the normality of their existence you know they see this joy just transfuse them and that's because they got an intimation of genuine meaning and it's uh, and it's 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 not amenable to rational criticism, which is the thing that I thought that struck me as so miraculous about music, and why it has this element of salvation. It's like it puts you directly in touch with the meaning that sustains you in life directly, and it shows you what that would be, which is something like to observe the harmonious interplay of the patterns of being stacked on top of one another, and then to bring yourself into alignment with that which is what yogis strive to do and what disciplined athletes strive to do and what we celebrate in athletics. and It's all a reflection of the same thing. And that's real. It's real, that meaning. 